Matthew McConaughey and Sean Mendes are here on the show. Bless you, gentlemen. I'm so happy to see you. Can I be honest? I've never felt less attractive in a trio in my life. But I'm, <laughs> I'm so... I feel like I'm a distant cousin that only comes out on Thanksgiving. <laughs> but I'm so happy to see you both. Now, people may not know this, but you are friends. Matthew, how did this bromance begin? What did you do? I think you asked for my number, you called, or I called you. I don't remember. Anyway, we kind of hit it off pretty doggone quickly, man. And I, and I saw this uh, uh, young man who I was a fan. I think I was, may have been a fan of yours before you were a fan of mine. I don't know how long you've been a fan of mine, but I was a fan of your music before you I've called. Been a fan of, I've been a fan of yours before I was even a... I was like, I had braces and no one ever knew my name. I was in, back in Canada still. But I'm pretty sure I forced this relationship on you. I mean, I... I I messaged him a few times on Instagram. I asked for his phone number, and then I was like, I got a call. It was like a desperate need of advice. And that's how the friendship started. What was the advice that was needed? <laughs> Matthew, can you remember what Sean asked you about? Sean, what we talk about? I mean, we talked about where you are right now and life. I mean, I, uh, we shared some stories that were similar situations. Um, I mean, look, he called. We started talking, I immediately saw somebody. I was like, ah, oh, this is a really conscientious young man. He's really yeah. focused, self-determined. He's sort of an old soul. That came across pretty doggone quickly. And I was like, here's a guy who's choosing to challenge himself professionally and personally. Um, and so, uh, what, what did we talk I was, about? I was, I think I was at, I was looking for some counsel on like, how to just take the blame and take the glory. And I think you told me something that I, that I didn't, this was actually before I read the book, but you said you have to be the author of your own life. And I think there comes a point in everybody's life where you kind of have to start making your own choices. And that means taking the blame when things go wrong and taking the glory when things go right. And I kid you not, I, after that conversation, it was like <clears throat> all these opportunities, I just heard you in my ear like, you gotta be the author of your own life. Be, uh, and I was like, all right, I got this. I'm going to do this. And it was, uh, yeah, it really helped me. I really, it really did help me. I told you, I, I messaged you a bunch of times. And then I read the book and I was like grow, growing my hair out. I unbuttoned a button in my shirt. I was like <laughs> basically <t> <laughs> I was, <laughs> I'm wow. doing everything in my power. To you both had incredible projects this past year. Sean has mentioned your incredible memoir, Green Lights. It's a New York Times bestseller. It's a very revealing look at your life. How, do you, how does it feel now to have this out there in the world and, you know, being an inspiration for Sean and all of us knowing all of these details about your life that you've shared? Well, it's, it's quite freeing, actually, because, I mean, I was very honest. I talked about a lot of, you know, beauties in my life, a lot of successes. I also talked about a lot of what some people would call warts and all. Um, I think... My favorite thing about it, and I, I bet you Sean can attest to this as a musician, as an artist, when you put something out, you know, we don't, we don't write it or make the music thinking, oh, it's got to be for someone else. It's got to be very personal. But when you put something personal out, that translates to many different people in a particular way. And they see themselves in your story or hear themselves in your song or have that similar circumstance in their life. And they come back to you and go, here's what I got from it. Or, oh, this reminded me of this time in my life. That's my favorite thing is hearing different people like Sean say, this is what it meant to me. This is what I got from it. And I also found, and I bet you, Sean, you'll, you'll attest to this. In art, the more personal you get, actually, the more relatable your work becomes. And it would seem like a contradiction, but it's not. Let's talk about your album, Sean. Wanda, it came out on Friday. It's on track to be your fourth number one album in a row. You've said that the album feels like freedom to you. Uh, what, what do you mean by that? I mean, I really, I think, went through a, a moment this time around where I said to myself, like, you have to let go of the expectations of this having to be the fourth number one album. Uh, you just have to be happy with making music and really enjoying it. And, it took a long time for me to get to a place where I walked into the studio and I was like, whatever happens, happens. This is the, the magic of art. Um, but when I did that, I mean, I don't want to... I, I, I love this music. This is the, the best, the coolest, the most exciting music, in my opinion, that I've ever made, and I adore it. I mean, um, I'm so proud of it. 
more than any other. And that's because I think I did it from the most free place I've ever been. But yeah, I mean, look at that. I'm in the middle of the ocean there. I absolutely love it. I think, that, I think the record is, 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 is so brilliant and it feels like a true progression for you as an artist. It, re it really does. Matthew, I wanted to talk to you about this. You recently did a virtual live stream of your star making performance in Dazed and Confused. What did it feel like to go back and revisit that character in that time? In Dazed, um, you know, we got on and I hadn't seen a lot of that cast in what, 28 years. Few of them looked younger, <laughs> actually. Um, and we got to hang for 30 minutes before we went on the live read. So catching up with everybody and retelling stories and hearing people going, no, that's not how it happened. It went down like this. And then everybody, we were having a ball before we even got on with that read. But then to go in and do it again, you know, that was my first film. And I, don't, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you two with the life I have if I didn't have that film in that summer of 1992 with director Richard Linklater inviting me to set, back to set every night for three weeks and what was supposed to initially be three lines. And he kept inviting me back. And that cast, I'd be in scenes. They would lob me, ask me questions as in character that weren't even scripted. They were just inviting me into the script and all of a sudden I'm on the train with them. And all of a sudden, I'm in the movie. I worked for three weeks, and Wooderson turned out to be a main character. It was, I've never had a better experience. I really learned how to um, create, collaborate, uh, and, and, and act on that film. Well, we're so glad you did. We really, really are. It's lovely chatting to you both.